Hey everyone, welcome to Ecclesia Fire Ministries again, and this is the 25th chapter of our Proverbs series here. So please like and subscribe, hit that notification bell so that you can get an episode as soon as it comes out, and we will get into it. Okay, so verse 1, we have a little bit of a title here. It says, These also are Proverbs of Solomon. Which the man, uh, which the men of Hezekiah, king of Judah, transcribed. So, uh, you know, some people might think uh, the way that the the books of the Bible were written was, you know, someone just sits down and writes the whole thing in one sitting. Um, a lot of times, they would go around and grab different portions that different people had recorded, and then put them together. And this is like that, in that way there. These, these are from the ones that they got from the, the people that worked for Hezekiah there. So, it is the glory of God to conceal a matter, but the glory of kings is to search out a matter. So, I've said, I've mentioned this a lot uh, on the channel. It's one of my favorite verses. Uh, God hides things. But then he plays hide-and-seek with his mysteries, with his kings. So when you step into sonship, kingship becomes available. When you set in that, it's not just a right to begin searching out the mysteries of God. It's also a responsibility. Okay? So think about that. You know, ask the Holy Spirit, uh, you know, what are what are the things that you want me to be searching out right now? And a lot of times, these things are going to be things that you have to access in subjective revelation. Okay? It, it, because if, if it was in a book, people would know about it already. Right? So just keep that in mind. And... Um, Ask the Holy Spirit, you know, what research projects do you want for me to focus on to, to dig up? And, uh, you know, the Lord will begin to speak to you on those things. As the heavens for height and the earth for depth, so the heart of kings is unsearchable. The, another thing about kingship is... As we begin to align ourselves more and more with the heart of the Father, our, our heart begins to enlarge with the things that the Father desires. You know how it talks about how He gives us the desires of our heart. Well, as our heart matches our Father's, we desire what He desires. Okay? And, and in the Spirit... His heart is uncertain. It's huge. It's it's so big. He has so much. You know, the Bible says, "What is man that you are mindful of him?" And that word "mindful" means full mind. Like it's he's just thinking of us all the time. Take away the dross from the silver, and there comes out a vessel for the smith. Take away the wicked before the king, and his throne will be established. In righteousness, so dross is is like the the slag that comes up when you put the silver in the furnace. It's the impurities, and so what it's saying there is get these wicked people that are counseling around leaders out of there. And it says his throne will be established in righteousness because even if it's a good leader. If he's surrounded by people that are wicked, by backstabbers, he's not going to be able to establish that throne very well. Do not claim honor in the presence of a king, and do not stand in the place of great men. For it is better that it be said to you, come up here, than for you to be placed lower in the presence of a prince, of the prince whom your eyes have seen. This is right in line with what Jesus talked about not choosing the best place at the table choose the lesser place then publicly you know you'll be favored by them asking you to sit in a better place it's you know it's it's humility 
Do not go out hastily to argue your case. Otherwise, what will you do in the end when your neighbor humiliates you? Now this keeps going, but I want to hit this first because there's a lot going on here. Uh, so it's basically saying prepare. You know, don't don't run into a fight too quickly. Know what you're getting yourself into. Know your argument well, whether this be a court issue or, or, or whatever. So then in the next verse, it says, argue your, argue your case with your neighbor and do not reveal the secret of another. Or he who hears it will reproach you and the evil report about you will not pass away. So there's a number of different translations that kind of approach this differently. Basically, this is talking about don't be a gossip. Uh, be careful about the certain things that you might use in an argument that might um, uh, reveal a secret about somebody because then they can turn it on you and say, you know, oh, well, this guy's a gossip and hurt your reputation in that. Just just be careful in those things and, and ask the Lord for prudence. Like apples of gold in the setting of silver is a word spoken in right circumstances. Like an earring of gold and an ornament of fine gold is a wise reprover to a listening ear. So it's saying it's just right. That's basically what that's going through. Okay, like the cold of snow in the time of harvest is a faithful messenger to those who send him, for he refreshes the soul of his masters. Uh, you know, uh, you can look at this with your job. Um, you know, if if your boss can't trust in somebody, it's not good. <laughs> uh, if you're a business owner and you can't find good help and you just can't trust people, that's not good. So then you could say, well, let I'm going to be the refreshing to the soul of the leadership. I'm going to be that faithful messenger there. I'm going to be, you know, make for myself, show them that I can uh, make for myself a name of trustworthiness. Amen. You build that. You know, honor is required because we're made in the image of God. But acquiring responsibility is what helps your reputation. Okay. You got to earn your reputation there among men. And it even talks about how Jesus, as he grew, he increased in stature among men. He worked on his reputation. Like clouds and wind without rain is a man who boasts of his gifts falsely. Yeah, all talk, no action, basically. By forbearance a ruler may be persuaded, and a soft tongue breaks the bone. So forbearance means patience through hard times okay holding back not not flying off at the handle other translations will just say patience here it's it's basically showing the people around you that you can handle yourself in times of stress you can win over people to your side through that and you know then it says soft tongue breaks the bone Everybody knows the overbearing person and, you know, the, the bullish person. But it's that right word spoken softly that can really move mountains at the right time. And Scripture says a wise man keeps his words few. If you don't talk all the time, then when you do talk, people will actually pay attention. Because if you talk too much, it's just blah, 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 and they filter you out. But if you make for yourself a name that he's quiet, but when he speaks, wisdom comes out, that's in that vein there where it's spoken in the right manner, okay? 
Have you found honey? Eat only what you need, that you not have it in excess and vomit it. So too much of a good thing. Uh, just because you can doesn't mean you should. Amen. Let your foot rarely be in your neighbor's house, or he will become weary of you and hate you. Yeah, you know, it, this is prudence. You know, uh, don't be going over to your friend's house all the time, you know, <laughs> because you know, someone does that to you, and, and as soon as they leave, you, you know, you're like, wow, that guy was never going to leave. So you don't want to be that for someone else. Like a club and a sword and a sharp arrow is a man who bears false witness against his neighbor. Like a bad tooth and an unsteady foot is confidence in a faithless man in time of trouble. Yeah, so pick your inner circle wisely. Ask the Lord to bring the right people in and to remove the wrong people in your life. Okay, the Bible talks about how how the Lord shuts doors that no man can open. God can shut doors on relationships that aren't healthy for you there. Like one who takes off a garment on a cold day, or like vinegar on soda, is he who sings songs to a troubled heart. So, you know, I know that a lot of times... People want to cheer up their loved ones when they're going through a hard time. Uh, just just do that with balance. Make sure you're careful on that because when someone has a real troubled heart, you know, even in the book of Job, uh, as soon as his, his friends arrived there, they didn't say anything. They didn't try to cheer him up. They just sat there with him for a lot for days. So sometimes people just want someone to sit there with them, okay? If your enemy is hungry, give him food to eat. And if he is thirsty, give him water to drink. For you will heap burning coals on his head, and the Lord will reward you. So here's the thing. You know, the Bible says... Uh, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. It says your enemy. Obviously, this is speaking of humans, though. Why is he an enemy? Well, maybe he's a really wicked person. But most of the time, it's just that somebody has framed you as the bad guy. Okay? And when you break that and do the opposite of what they expect you to fulfill in that perception of who you are in their mind, it really messes with them. And the, the heaping of, of hot coals is speaking of shame. They will be ashamed that they have treated you this way. Now, some people are full-on wicked and, and they're not necessarily going to be moved uh, to the fullest extent of, you know, oh gosh, I'm sorry for everything I did to you. But in many cases that will happen. And regardless, the Bible says the Lord will reward you. Okay? The north wind brings forth rain and a backbiting tongue and angry countenance. So you got to Put yourself in Solomon's shoes. He's in Israel. And so apparently in Israel, the north wind brings rain. So he's basically saying as sure as when you feel that north wind blowing, that, it's, that rain's coming, so also a backbiting tongue brings an angry countenance. So, you know, as a leader looking through your organization, if there's backbiting speech, then it's going to present an angry countenance among the people there. And so that's, you know, okay, why, why is there an angry countenance? Well, there's probably a backbiting tongue somewhere, so we need to root that out. 
It is better to live in a corner of the roof than in a house shared with a contentious woman. So the question would be, why is she contentious? Mainly because when people are tumultuous and contentious with people around them, it's really because there's a problem on the inside. They're, they're contentious in their heart. They're fighting something in their heart. Uh, so uh, that's an issue there that, that needs to be clear with Christ. Um, also an honor issue. If the woman is treating her husband uh, dishonorably, an honor problem is a fear of God problem. Because if you fear the Lord, you'd honor the members of his body. Like cold water to a weary soul, so is good news from a distant land. So this is kind of interesting. It's kind of a odd little thing here. But uh, I would say from this, you know, listen to, listen to testimonies. Listen to what Jesus is doing in other people's life that, that aren't around you, you know, from a distant land. <laughs> Listen to the stories of what Jesus is doing all around the globe. Because if you haven't in a while, testimony is powerful. Okay? Testimony is powerful. And the thing about it, Scripture says, the testimony of Jesus Christ is the spirit of prophecy. When you hear testimonies of what Jesus did to someone else, the spirit of prophecy enters in to declare that thing that, hey, if they did it for them, he can do it for me, okay? Like a trampled spring and a polluted well is a righteous man who gives way before the wicked. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a big problem. Um, I've said this before on the channel, but, you know... Evil exists in the earth because of the fall of man and the devil, because he helps out in that. But it persists when good people do nothing. Okay? So, righteous man who gives way before the wicked. In the book of Revelation, it says, when it's listing the people that are going to be thrown in the lake of fire, it's interesting the first one listed there, it's not the murderer, it's not the rapist, it's not the adulterer, uh, it's the coward. Uh, it, it lists the coward first uh, in front of everybody. And, uh, you know, that's why it's important to make sure out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Uh, when 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 emergency comes upon you, whatever's on the inside's coming out. And so, if you don't spend time in the Word, and you don't spend time thinking about why you think the way that you think, meditating on the Word, you're not going to take the time to dig out fear-based reactions. Because in times of trouble, sometimes you don't have time to think through. You can only react. And whatever's on the inside, if it hasn't been cleaned out and given to the Lord, it could express itself in a manner that, that you're not very proud of. And so it's important to prepare yourself in the inner man and think okay why do I believe this way well because of the word whenever you drill down in your why do I think you always need to land on a specific you know a certain scriptural principle okay that that has to be the foundation and if you arrive at oh I'm actually fearful in that area then that's the moment to rebuke it and cast it out so that later when you don't have time, it doesn't come out. And then you're like, oh, man, I can't believe I reacted like that. That's real. Oh, God, please forgive me. Acting in cowardice 
instead of in faith. So just keep that in mind. It is not good to eat much honey, nor is it glory to search out one's own glory. Yeah, not good to eat much honey. Like, like we said earlier, uh, just because you can doesn't mean you should. <laughs> uh, other principles, other scriptures, you know, he who loves pleasure will come to ruin. Uh, he who loves wine and oil will become poor. Uh, you know, we want to do the hard thing. We want to be disciplined. We want to, to study the show thyself approved always so that you're a warrior in a garden instead of finding yourself a gardener in times of war. Okay? Too much uh, easy living will lead to slackness. Okay? There's no, no glory to search out one's own glory. But let the Lord promote you. Okay? Many, many examples in Scripture of people trying to do something in their own power and and then saying, oh gosh, you know, I should have waited for the Lord. Wait on the Lord and become content in ministering unto the Lord in your prayer closet. Become content in showing Him your best even when other, people's, uh, other people aren't watching. Okay? Because He said, what you do in secret, Father's going to openly reward okay like a city that is broken into and without walls is a man who has no control over his spirit so this one's interesting now obviously this is in the old covenant so the spirit man is not uh, regenerated uh, this is not a new birth spirit man uh, because of the, the cross, the barrel, the resurrection. Um, so, you could take it literally and say this is someone that has no control over their spirit in its dead state before the new covenant. Uh, you could also look at this figuratively and just say, you know, like, well, the spirit of a man and his general... A being and he has no control over it that one's making more sense however I'm always careful to not approach Hebrew scriptures from a Greek mind okay and the Western mind is more Greek than it is Hebrew and oftentimes we'll say well is this literal or is it figurative just be careful about that because in the Hebrew scope of things in that ancient Eastern mindset it's not usually this or that it's usually this and that in some way because of how broadly they would look at things so just for your um, studying of the word let the Holy Spirit guide you in that all right that was the 25th chapter y'all be blessed please check out what we have in the description box below and we will see you later. Thanks. Bye.